Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. Last time we had a look through the box for our new Seagull Challenger. Today we're going to build up the wings. Straight into it I reckon. We'll need some glue. Going to use some Speed Bond. Basically a quick drying white glue. Some thick Sino as it takes a little bit longer to go off and it fills any small gaps rather nicely. Some thin Sino for the bulk of the construction. There's also a woodworking square to make sure everything's nice and straight. Oh, and a sharp knife will come in very handy. Even though it's a laser cut kit, there will still be things that don't quite fit. There always is. As usual, if you've not built too many kits before, study the instructions and the plan. They're not perfect, some of the steps are questionable, and interestingly the plan doesn't quite match up with the supplied parts. With any luck the video will fill in any blanks. The first step is to pop the ribs onto the spar. Be careful as it's entirely possible to build two left wings. So compare the two halves before you go anywhere near them with glue. The ribs go over the spar, then rotate into the slots. Quite a nice design that will make it nice and easy to build a good straight wing. W0 goes at the wing root, then a W1, W2, 3, 4, two W5s and a W6 at the end. The only ones to really watch out for are W6, where you want the balsa doubler on the inside face, and W3, where you want the plywood piece towards the outside. The two special ribs are different for each wing panel, so double check you have the right ones. W1 has a slot in it that locates on the end of the spar. The plywood W0 gets glued to the end face. For now though, there's not much point in fitting them, as they'll just get in the way and likely fall off a lot. Also worth noting, the end of the spar isn't square. It's angled a bit to account for the dihedral when it's fitted to the fuselage. The trailing edge can go on now. Still no glue in use, just dry building. The ribs have a small tab on the end that fits into slots in the trailing edge. Just about tight enough that they're not going to fall off. There's a little bit of vertical movement, so make sure the ribs are nicely centered on the trailing edge. The leading edge is just the same. Mine has a little bit of damage at one end, looks a bit ugly, but if we put it at the wing root, most of it will get trimmed off later. Starting to look a bit like a wing already. Now for the first fiddly bit. The leading edge isn't quite the right shape. If we just went on and glued it all together, we'd end up with a really rough looking wing. The top sheeting should nicely wrap around the front of the ribs and lie flat on the leading edge. Due to the shape, there's quite a bit of a step. We need to sand it to shape. We want the curve of the ribs to continue down over the leading edge so the glue joints are solid and the sheeting ends up being nice and smooth. The kit includes this lovely little sanding block but it's a bit coarse and a bit too small to make a smooth job of it. Emery paper around a block would be a bit better but better still are these permagrit blocks. Titanium carbide. They last forever. But then if you're really serious, there's a bit of a Paul Hogan moment. That's not a sanding block, this is a sanding block. <laughs> With nice long sweeping motions, you can really get a smooth, straight finish. I'll get on with that. Need to do the sanding outside. I'm still coughing up balsa from the last two kits where I did all the sanding indoors. Not the cleverest thing I've ever done. <laughs> Here we go then, the surfaces have been sanded down, and if we pop it onto the ribs, that lines up rather well. So, here's the dry build complete as far as we need to. Now we need to make sure the ribs are fully seated on the spar, and that the spar is central. It's much easier to do now than trying to cut the ribs free after gluing. At the moment, the wing is easy to twist. Once we apply glue, it will tend to keep whatever twist we build into it. So we need a nice flat surface to build on. Having the trailing edge up on blocks and weighed down will help a lot. When you're completely happy everything is as straight as you can make it, you can put a spot of thin sino where the ribs meet the spar. You only need a drop, it will run down and soak in all by itself. Give that a minute or two to dry and lift it up, flip it over, block it up again, make sure it's still all nice and straight and pop a drop of thin sino on the bottom joints. I'm going to spin the wing around so I can see what I'm doing, but you could just move the top blocks up the ribs a bit, just so we don't glue them to the trailing edge. Again, make sure it's all square and put a drop of thin sino where the ribs attach to the trailing edge. 
the leading edge is just the same I'll spin the wing around again so I can actually see what I'm doing with the wing blocked up put some drops of cyano where the ribs meet the leading edge by now the wing will be starting to really hold its shape the plywood trailing edge makes it stronger much earlier than traditional kits where you really need to pin the parts down to a board and only take them off once most of the wing is complete the root rib can go on now I found the fit to be tight enough there wasn't much need for extra jigging. It can be slotted on and a drop of thin cyano put on the tab, then a drop on the leading edge and the trailing edge. Spar cap strips now. These have their numbers laser cut into one end. I'm going to put the numbers out of the wing tips as the weakness isn't an issue out there. The strips slot into the top of the ribs and should fit perfectly flat onto the spar one on the top and one on the bottom this is another bit that could put a nice twist into our wing so it's best to block up the wing so it's good and flat make sure the cap strips are fully seated then put a drop of cyano where the strips go through the ribs flip the wing over and glue the other cap strip too leave it to dry for a couple of minutes then lift the wing and put another couple of drops where the cap strip sits on the spar between the ribs the clothes peg is handy for making sure everything's in contact be careful not to have the wing twisted while you do this. It will be pretty sturdy by now, but if you lean the wing on the table or something like that, you could still build in quite a good twist. Leave it to dry, then glue up the other cap strip in just the same way. Next, I'm going to fit the wing tip. Not quite in the order that the manual wants, but the nice straight edge of the tip on the outer rib will help pull all the other ribs into line before the sheeting goes on. I found the tip slot on the trailing edge was just slightly too long, making the tip not sit nice and flush to the rib. All it needed was a couple of passes with a sanding block. And there we go. Perfect fit. It only needs a few drops of thin cyano here and there. It will wick around everywhere else. With the tip fitted to the wing, it's quite a bit stiffer. Next up, sheeting. Top surface first. W15 is the leading edge sheet. It's got a cutout for the root sheet. W17 and there's W19 the trailing edge sheet all nicely cut worth noting W17 is a little bit oversized so that will need to get a trim we will go into that in a couple of minutes the leading edge sheet can go on first the old method was to use white glue or going back further balsa cement both of which take an absolute age to go off you had to pin the sheet to the ribs while the glue dried hoping the pins didn't pop out while you weren't looking with the white glue especially, it would warp the wood so you had to really weigh it down so it all kept its shape. These days though, if you're careful, you can use the cyno. A two-step process. Start by running some thick cyno along the cap strip and carefully lining up the sheet. You only get a couple of seconds to adjust, so get it right. Then a few pegs to hold it tightly together. Now, because we're using thick cyno, it will take a few minutes to fully go off. We're going to be stressing the glue joint, so we don't want it to crack if the glue hasn't set fully. To be safe, I normally leave it for at least 30 minutes, but an hour wouldn't hurt. Okay, the pegs can come off now. What we're going to do is carefully bend the sheet over the ribs to meet the leading edge. This puts quite a bit of stress on the glue joint, as I'm sure you can imagine. Starting at the centre rib, bend the sheet and put a couple of drops where it meets the rib. Hold it tight for a few seconds. This one needs to be nicely set before you let go, or it will pop off. Then move out a rib and glue that one to the sheet. Then the one opposite, basically working from the centre ribs to the end ribs. This reduces the risk of building in a twist on the wing to an absolute minimum. This first bit of sheeting is the most critical in terms of twist. Once it's glued down, the wing is a lot more solid. Because we've only glued along the ribs to the sheeting, we also need to put a spot or two along the leading edge between the ribs. Put a drop on, then give it a good squeeze. Hold it for a few seconds, and on to the next. It may seem like a fair amount of effort, but overall, compared to the old methods, it's a lot less prone to error. There was nothing worse, especially with the glues you had to leave overnight, to come down in the morning and discover the sheeting had partially popped off the ribs. It took ages to fix, and sometimes the wing would only be good for scrap. The trailing edge is flat, so it just needs some thick cyno running along the trailing edge, and 15mm or so up the ribs. This sheet fits into cutout portions on most of the ribs, so it doesn't take much to get it into the right spot. 
to keep things straight, blocking up the wing probably isn't a bad idea. The root sheeting is a little bit more awkward. The sheet is the correct width, but too long. I guess they did this so it can be trimmed for a perfect fit. It just needs a little tiny bit trimming off. You can measure and mark, or just trim off a sliver and give it a go. When you're close, a few passes on a sanding block to finish. When you've got it to fit, run some thick sino over the ribs and press it into place. Where the sheet meets, put some thin sino along the joint. It will soak in, making the whole lot nice and solid. Not too surprisingly, the next step is to fit the bottom sheeting. The leading edge is a little bit different. It's got a big hole at one end for accessing the wing mounting tab, and has an extra cutout for the servo mount sheet. Fitting it is just the same though. Block up the wing, run some thick sino along the cap strip, peg the sheet into place, and leave it to fully dry. Gluing the sheet to the ribs is a little bit more fiddly, but since there's some nice big holes in the spar, you can get the thin sino in if you have a sufficiently long nozzle. Just as before, glue it all down and work from the centre. Then, glue the sheeting down to the leading edge between the ribs. The trailing edge is fitted identically too. Some thick sino and line up the sheet with the cutouts in the ribs. The root sheet is again a little bit oversized, so trim that to fit and glue it in. The wing now feels extremely solid. Nice! The underside has an extra bit of sheeting with some plywood reinforcements. Just like the root sheet, it will need a bit of a trim to fit. This time though, you have to make sure the plywood bit fits in the slots in the ribs as well as the sheeting fitting between the other sheets. Now, since this is a servo mount, we also need to make sure that a servo actually fits. Which, of course, it doesn't. But that's a good thing, as standard size servos aren't all exactly the same size. Having an undersized hole means we can file it out to fit. We want the servo to be a slightly loose fit as the plastic film covering will take up just a little bit of space. The sheeting goes on just like the root sheet, a bit of sino along the ribs and press the sheeting into place. I slightly overcut the sheet but that's not a problem. I kept the trimming so I can just stuff it into the gap and put a couple of drops of thin sino on. Once sanded that will completely disappear. While we have the sino out, we need to go around the wing and carefully check to see if anything hasn't properly stuck together. Also, make sure where all the sheets meet up that they're properly glued. Double check everything at this stage will give us a much stronger wing. This is where the ARTFs fall down. It's not uncommon for a model to have parts that simply aren't stuck together. Failing in flight, not good. When you're happy, it's time to trim the excess sheet from the root rib. A quick hack with a knife to get the bulk of it. Doesn't matter if it's a bit rough as long as you don't go beyond the rib. Then, a careful rub with a sanding block. We want to make a nice flat surface. Like so. <laughs> Next, the plywood rib needs to go on. This needs some careful alignment. And it just so happens we need to fit a dowel towards the back of the wing to locate it in the fuselage. This will work a treat for aligning the rib too. There's also a fiberglass tube that goes through the large hole. We'll line everything up perfectly. But first, we need to pop the end stop in for the tube. It has a tab that fits into a slot in the spar. Hard to get the position wrong. <laughs> we want the fiberglass tube to go all the way through the ply rib. Not quite what the instructions want. Means the hole is a little bit on the small side. A few passes evenly around the hole with a nice file will sort that out though. There we go. A nice tight fit. The rest of the tube gets fed through the wing right up to the end stop. Make sure the end stop is across the centre of the tube and it can be glued in with some thin sino. Then, where the tube goes through the ribs, some nice thick sino. Let it all completely dry. Best to leave it for 30 minutes or so. Right, now we can glue the ply rib on. It's a joint with a large surface area, so we can't guarantee a good joint with the sino. This is a job for white glue. Squirt some onto the end rib and spread it around evenly. Sorry I'm not entirely in frame, but you get the idea. Leave a 5mm or so dry patch around the mounting tab slot. The glue will end up getting squeezed in to fill it anyway. And make sure there's some glue in the hole for the trailing edge dowel. Press the ply rib into place and insert the dowel. The downside with using the white glue is it will warp the ply rib, so you need to really strap it down. A couple of rubber bands in the centre, and some nice big rubber bands on the leading and trailing edge. Better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> a 
a little bit of the glue has made its way into the mounting tab slot. We need to clear that so the tab fits properly when we get to fitting it. Just wipe it with a bit of cardboard. Now, the wing needs to be left fully dry. Normally white glue would be an overnight job, but speed bond is usually okay after an hour or so. But, to be safe, two or three hours. Well, while it was drying, I went and spread some filler around, mainly over the joints so we get a nice smooth finish after sanding. There's also the laser cut part numbers, some of which have quite large holes. I put some tape on the back and spread some filler on the top. Much like this. <laughs> some tape on the back so we're not going to waste lots of filler. This is the stuff I use. I think it's a general purpose house type filler, not sure. I got it from a model shop a long time ago. The key is it's very light and it doesn't shrink as it dries, making it perfect for wood filling. It just needs a little bit pressed into the holes and the excess skimming off the top. Simple. Completely optional of course, even without filling the imperfections, the finish after sanding should be pretty good. Not much left to do now before the final sanding. We need to fit these little bits on the tips. They do have a right way up, so make sure it sits close to flush with the ribs. When you're happy, a drop or two of thin sino to glue them on. The fiberglass tube needs a trim. It should be completely flush with the end rib. A few passes with a Stanley knife to get the bulk of it off, then a careful application of thin sino. We want to soak into the rough end of the tube and the wood, but not let any run down the inside of the tube, as that would make the joiner tube an awkward fit. Let it dry for a couple of minutes, then with a very sharp knife, trim the rest of the tube so it sits all but flush with the rib. Polish the surface with a bit of emery paper, then go around the inside lip to take off anything that might be sticking out. It should feel completely smooth. Don't forget when working with fiberglass, take precautions not to breathe in the dust. It's not nice stuff. Now it's time for the final sanding. I'm going to use my big sanding block. You can cover most of the wing with each stroke. It's really easy to get an even finish with it. The ribs currently stick up slightly above the sheeting, so the whole lot will get taken down to a nice smooth curve. And there we go. Nice and smooth. The discolouring on the leading edge is the glue from when we stuck the sheeting on. The sheeting has been taken down, so the sanding block was just starting to touch the plywood rib. The wing tip has been rounded off and a bit of extra balsa stuck on to build it up to match the leading edge. It's the small things now that really make the final appearance, all in the details. One more thing to do now, the ailerons, specifically the hinges. The kit comes with these flexible fibre hinges. The idea is you pop them into the trailing edge of the wing and the aileron, put a couple of drops of Sino on and job done. But I really don't like them. You end up with a fairly stiff hinge and you're relying on material that you're flexing back and forth to keep the control surface attached. Not brilliant. Instead, I use these pinned hinges like a short nylon piano hinge. They're a bit more effort to fit, but the result is a really free moving surface. The slots in the trailing edge are too small for the thicker hinge, so they'll need to be opened up a bit. Like so. <laughs> the plywood is a bit of a pain to make slots in. I started with a knife, using the back edge to dig some of the wood out until I could get this tool in. The end is hard steel with a small hook. You can really very quickly open up the slot. The slot needs to be just big enough so the hinge is an easy fit. We need the hinge to be able to settle itself to the right position when we come to glue it in. The ailerons, being balsa, are a bit easier to open the slot in. I use this tool to start the slot. It just gets pressed in, making sure it's nice and straight. Then the hook tool goes in to clear out all the debris. Really simple to do. Then the aileron just slots in, giving us a really smooth, free moving surface. So much nicer than those fibre things. But there's another thing we need to do, because the middle of the hinge has a bit of a bulge where the pin goes in. There's quite a big gap between the wing and the aileron. We need to let the hinges into the faces. The ailerons are easy enough. Make two angled cuts at each end of the slot, then cut a small strip out between them. The hinge now fits in with the pin at the hinge line. Usually you can do the same thing on the wing. But, as it's plywood, it would be a bit tricky to do with a knife. So I got the Dremel out and a dentist drill, and cut a 1.5mm deep slot in the surface. The result? No gap between the wing and the aileron. Perfect! You can see the pockets where the hinges sit. It's not too much extra work, and a far nicer surface movement. 
Also, since the trailing edge isn't particularly deep, I've added some balsa blocks for the hinges. Gives it a bit more surface for the hinges to be glued to. Right then, that's it for the wing. The only other bit is the mounting tab, but there's no way to align it until the fuselage is built. We need to be able to fit the wings into their slots and fit the mounting screws to make sure it's in exactly the right place. So we'll leave that for now. Okay, that'll do for today, I think. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, do please hit the like button. And if you're not already, do please subscribe. Bye guys.